My name is Scott Reckler and I'm 29 years old. Cool. And, and what are you doing to solve today's problems? What is your story? My story. I am director of an organization called Learn Serve International, which trains high school students to be effective leaders and social entrepreneurs in their community. So we're working with uh, dynamic high school students from 30 different public, private, and charter schools in the D.C. area and walking them through the steps of designing and launching their own social ventures and introducing them to issues uh, facing their communities here in D.C. and in other parts of the world and helping them get the tools to take action on those issues. Cool. Cool. And what kind of, what kind of programs do you run? Just a brief overview. Yeah, we run two main programs. One of them is international service learning trips for students and teachers from all these different high schools. Um, programs in Zambia and in Paraguay where students have the opportunity to understand what are the realities of life and challenges on the ground in those countries, what is the experience of being a high school student in those different countries, and then really what are organizations doing locally to address some of those challenges that they see, uh, with the idea that the students will be inspired by those stories, understand what social change looks like at the grassroots level, and bring back to their schools and communities here in the U.S. Uh, both an understanding and insight of what's going on in those countries to share with the rest of their peers, but also with ideas of what they can do in their own communities back home to make a difference. Cool. Um, and then I, yeah. I should also mention we have another program, which is a year-long social entrepreneurship training program, where we uh, walk students through the steps to take an issue that they're passionate about, something that they're really concerned about, and design a business plan or an action plan around that. And so we walk them through the steps of putting together the mission and vision, marketing plan, fundraising strategy, all the different pieces so that they can pitch that idea and get uh, seed funding to get this organization off the ground. Cool. And the coalition that we're looking to build is a lot about working across traditional boundaries or people are kind of labeled liberal, conservative, or, you know, religious, nonprofit. We'd like to hear how have you, you know, worked uh, across traditional boundaries to, in, in your work? Yeah. I think one of the things that makes our program different um, is really this focus on bringing together a mix of students from really different backgrounds. And if you look at youth serving programs that are out there, most of them are focused on students of one demographic or another de demographic and a lot of silos and isolation. And what we're really trying to do through our program is bring together students of all different um, socioeconomic backgrounds, ethnic backgrounds, religious backgrounds, issue areas that they're interested in, family backgrounds, the whole mix. Um, they're united by this common idea that they want to make a difference in the world and would like to develop the tools and skills to really figure out how to do so most effectively. Um, and so by bringing together that set of groups and by extension their, their, that set of students and by extension their schools, their families and others, it really creates a much larger movement around social change here in the D.C. area. Cool. How old were you when you first got involved in social entrepreneurship or youth movements or anything like that? I think probably I was a high school student myself, which is why I'm so excited to work with high school students, um, both in, involved in student organizations at my school, um, environmental club, trying to set up a recycling program in the school, um, and also participated in a program called Operation Understanding DC, which is a black Jewish race relations program here in the DC area that's fighting. Um, prejudice, discrimination, and anti-Semitism. And I think that experience both connecting with the students in that program, um, some of the guest presenters, and just wrestling with what are the issues facing those two communities really inspired me and set me on this path uh, of social change. Cool. So that, that was the moment. That's yeah, great. that was at least one of the moments. I also had opportunities to travel internationally to do service projects in um, Ecuador and later in Bolivia and Chile. Um, and have the international perspective as well. And so I think it's a combination of both the, the programs here domestically, here in the D.C. area especially, as well as internationally. The combination of those, it's not entirely coincidental that the organization that uh, I'm working with now is touching on both of those areas and trying to figure out what's the relationship between the two. Very cool. What are some challenges you see facing young people today? I think the biggest challenge, and it's something that I've heard by extension because I have the privilege of working with the students who are most motivated, most excited, most engaged in these um, wrestling with these social justice issues and trying to figure out what they can do but the number one challenge that all of them talk about is just the overall apathy of the other students in their schools that they feel like they're the lone voices, the lone people who are really interested in these issues, wrestling with these issues, trying to make some sort of change. That's not the, the common mode and so I think one of the biggest gaps is just really um, getting students engaged and involved in understanding what are the issues facing their communities here, communities in other parts of the world, and helping them feel like, hey, we don't have to wait for someone else, the grown-ups, to solve these problems, but we actually have a voice, we have an opportunity to make a difference ourselves. And so building up that understanding of the issues, the confidence in making a difference, and then giving them the concrete tools to do so most effectively, I think is a, about the biggest challenge and biggest opportunity facing youth today. And you touched on this, but following up, what advice would you have 
for a young person who wants to get involved? I think just dive in and get involved and don't sit back and think, oh, well, someone else is going to solve this problem. But if there's something that sort of as you're walking around your school, as you're walking around your neighborhood, watching the news, and you say, oh, the world can't be this way, there's, this just isn't right, don't just say, oh, well, well, someone else will figure it out, but say, okay, well, what can I do to make a difference? How can I take what I'm good at, what I'm excited about doing, what I'm passionate about, and tie that in with this issue that I care about to really um, inspire others, get others involved in this process of making a difference around that issue.